Hi everyone. So yesterday uh, we just finished this one, which is um, N to one and one to N notifications. Okay. So in this session we will continue to check the other use cases for GoLang channels, Go channels. Uh, this time it is not notifications, but it is a broadcast. Broadcast one to N notifications by closing a channel. Okay, so one to n broadcast. Let us open this package first. One to n, one to n broadcast. One to n broadcast. to n uh, package cannot start with one okay here we will do a function run okay so the way to do uh, one to n notifications shown in the last subsection is seldom used in the practice for there is a better way by making using of a feature that infinite values In the last subsection, we can replace the three channel sound operations with this in the last. Okay, so here um, it says that we did a notification here one to n, okay, and then uh, here it is saying okay we did a one to n notification, but there is a better way to do that, which is broadcasting, and we are about to have a look at this example by making using of the feature that infinite values can be received from a closed channel, we can close a channel to broadcast notification. Okay. This time we will do a closing a channel operation here. By the example in the last subsection, we can replace the three channel send operation, reduce struct in the last example with one channel close operation. Okay, you see, um, here we did ready, we just assign a struct value to ready channel, second time and the third time. So this is one to n notification because this is the main go routine. Within the main go routine, we are sending a value to a channel. And this ready, as you can see, this is a channel. We are passing this value to first execution go routine, the second one, and the third one. So you can say that this ready channel is copied through these uh, go routine executions. And you can say that they are separate channels or something like that. So within your main go routine, you are just notifying them. That is why it is one to end notification. So this time we will not do ready this notation, right? We will use another uh, notation to do that, which is uh, closed. 
Surely we can also close a channel to do one to one notification. In fact, this is the most used notification way in com. The feature that infinite values can be received from a closed channel will be utilized in many other use cases in this video. In fact, the feature is used popularly in the standard packages. For example, the context package uses this feature to confirm cancellations. Okay, you know, the context is very popular, especially if you are doing some kind of execution, job execution, or it can be a client connection and do something. And here, let's say that you just make a request to a third party, a service or an endpoint. If it takes something like more than one second, so you can just uh, cancel the operation if you pass the context to this execution. Timer, scheduled notifications. Yeah, we can also use timers. It is easy to use channels to implement one-time timers, a custom one-time timer implementation. We can maybe have a look at this one after duration. So there is a function after duration and it returns a channel which is receive only, right? Because you see the arrow, left arrow is on the right or left hand side. So it will return a receive only channel that contains struct type. Struct curly brackets means it can be anything. And inside this function, we are just creating a channel, right? And this channel contains structs, and the, it is a buffer channel, and it can contains on it can contain only one value at a time. Here, within the go routine, we are doing time that slip. We are slipping, making a delay within this execution. <coughs> <coughs> And you see, uh, we are trying to send a value, struct value to this channel, which we just created here, and we return this C. So inside the main function, when you call this one after duration, you can only read from this channel, right? You see the arrow is on the left hand side. So this returns a channel. When you put a left arrow on the left hand side, you are saying that just read the value. one second okay basically we are saying that hi is printed and then it says after duration time second so whatever you pass here it will cause a delay within this go routine so you are saying that go execution return c and it will directly return the channel receive only channel even you say this one this operation will be blocked right because even you say read something from the channel you need to wait for this operation which will be happen after one second here as you can see so this is a very easy function let me try to run this one func func uh, after duration and there will be a time that duration duration and this will be a left read or receive only channel struct no that's street struct okay and here we just uh, define a channel and this channel will be type of struct right and this will be a buffer channel and it will contain only one element inside it so but not used okay what we can do is we can introduce a variable okay c is okay here and then we will just provide a function here inside the function there will be time that sleep the duration value is coming from the function itself and after one second not one second but the second that provided by the user we are just adding a struct inside it then we are returning the channel itself okay <coughs> so this function returns a channel which is a receive only channel and here we will use it so the first usage is we are printing fmt.println uh, this is high okay and after that we are saying that just receive a value read a value from the channel after one second right and then we will just write a value here 
and the it will be hello and there will be another read operation after time second and after that there will be fmt print alone and this time it will be by so we will see hi one second delay hello one second delay and bye since you are trying to read here initially there will be no value inside the channel that means you will be blocked and after one second you will get a value from the channel and then that means you will you will be able to continue to execute this statement and then you will have another one delay and execute this one so let's go to the main function and add our value which is one two and broadcast and run okay we don't need to expose this function right here just say shift six I will say after duration okay after duration and after duration just go to the recent file and run comma r yep let's see you see hi hello and bye Okay, let's switch to the next use case. <coughs> use channels as mutex lux. So there is a package inside Golang which is called mutex, and inside the mutex there are a couple of uh, lots of uh, usable features. One of the above examples has mentioned that one capacity buffer channels can be used as a one-time binary semaphore. So maybe we can just use this one. So most probably you have heard this term semaphore if you are a computer engineering student in your operating system uh, lecture most probably in computer science a semaphore is a variable or extract data type used to control access to a common resource by multiple threads and avoid critical section problems in a concurrent system so think about there is a resource and uh, it can be accessed from different kind of threads at the same time so this semaphore is a variable or abstract data type used to control access to a common resource so let's say that there is an inspector this inspector is responsible for managing the access to a specific resource right okay in fact, such channels can also be used as a multi-time binary semaphores, also known as mutex lock, mutex locks. Talk. Uh, such mutex locks are not efficient as the mutex is provided in the sync standard package. There are two manners to use one capacity buffer channels as mutex locks: lock through a send, unlock. So here we used a channel. You see, the, the capacity of this channel is uh, one. That means when you send a value here without reading this value from the consumer side on the consumer side you cannot send another one it will be buffered right that means there is no way to access this value from multiple places so you need to wait for this value current value to be consumed by any kind of consumer that's it you cannot put as much as values here within this channel <coughs> so 
So there are two main reasons why people use one capacity buffer channels. Lock through a send, unlock through a receive. So basically you are sending a value here, but at the same time you are locking this operation. When you send something, you cannot send another, but you are unlocking through a receive. So send value, it will be blocked by for another send. In order to unblock this operation, you need to do a receive operation. Okay. So let's say that you have only one hand, right? You have only one hand and you are getting a ball from your colleague and you are passing it to another colleague, right? Let's say that you are transferring a ball from one location to another. And, um, or let's say that there is a fire. Uh, hope there is, there will be no such a situation in the near future, but let's say that there is a fire and um, a couple of people just gather together here and then they are trying to transfer a bucket that is filled by water from one person to another. So when you get a bucket from the people on your right hand side, you need to pass it to the another one, which is on your left hand side. And during this time, you cannot get another bucket, right? So this is a buffer channel, which is one capacity. And when you get something, your colleague cannot pass a second bucket to you. This is a lock, right? But the person on your left hand side, if he gets the bucket from you, then you will be unblocked. That means you can get another bucket from your right hand side. That's it. Lock through receive, unlock through ascent. And th th there can be vice versa operation here. This is an example, uh, is a lock through ascent example. Let's see. There is only a main function here, the capacity must be 1. So here, same, capacity is 1. There is a counter. So you just define a function and you can assign this function to a variable. So basically this is an increase function. What it does, mutex. So you just send a value to this mutex channel, right? When you send it, actually it will be locked. Why? Because the capacity is 1. You cannot just send another one to here. So you need to consume it first. You need to receive value from it first. You increase the counter and then you read it from it to in order to make it unlock. So it is something like atomic counter. It is a concurrent counter. Thread safe counter, let's say that. Here is another one increase 1000 it is another function but this time it accepts just the channel and this is a write only channel so if i pass this channel to here you can just only send a value to here you cannot read from it that is the definition it starts from 0 until to 1000 it is trying to increase here you see it is calling the increase function and on every on every oper iteration here after every so let's say that we iterated this one by 10 1000 and then we are seeing that we are passing a value to this done channel let's see what happens i create a channel which is a, has a type struct and it is called done i call a concurrent function here done i call another one done and i am reading you see i call that go routine the first one is executed and we passed a value here and we called another one increase function why we are calling this receive operations here two times because we executed two go routines and then we need to unlock them by calling the done function right i mean uh, we need to receive a value from the done if you ever use a javascript callback notation it is nearly same you know, so you are passing a callback value here callback function here and then once the operation is finished inside this function you are just sending a value to this done and then you can receive it 
when you print the counter you will see it will be 2000 the, the following is a log through send example yep we can say Mm -hmm. This is me. Log true sent. Create another directory. Log true sent. I will create another go file. Log true sent. There will be directly a run function here. Okay, so I'm creating a channel. Uh, the channel will have a type struct, right? S struct, and the capacity should be one, right? Because this will be a one capacity operation. And um, I will say I'll enter into this arrival C. C is fair enough, and there will be a counter, and the initial value will be zero. And let's define a function here. There is no shortcut for this. Okay. Inside this function, there will be a mutex. And the struct, but there will be nothing. Okay, this is just a mutex, and counter will be incremented by one, and then we will read the value from mutex. No. So the mutex itself is very, yeah, we shouldn't use this one. Let's say that M, M, oh, sorry. So we can just assign this one to introduce a local variable, increase, okay, we will use it, and this time there will be another function, function, this just accept a channel, channel, this will be a receive, a send on the channel, struct, and inside this function there will be an iteration it starts from zero starts from zero until two increase and we just send that down. Okay. And we can introduce a variable here. And this time it will be increase 1000. Okay, this is another function. And after all, we will um, create another channel channel type struct and let's introduce a variable here mm. this will be done 
So call initial 100. You pass your callback at the channel here. You call another one. You pass your channel again. In order to make them unlock, you call one first done and you make another done. You don't need to necessarily add this one and fmt.print ln the counter. No. <clears throat> so let's run this one. And um, lock percent run. To run it, comma r. Yeah. As ex expected. So let's revisit this, revisit this, this function for the fi uh, last time. Uh, basically, we create a channel with con with a one capacity, and there is a function which is called increase. We design, define this custom function. We send a value here, which is an empty struct. We increase the counter, and this function call. So this function is called from here, right? So within this iteration, when you call this increase function, actually um, it will be a blocking operation because uh, you see, it will be a blocking operation for a while. So you need to wait until this location. So when you say mutex here, you need to count increase counter by one until we, as soon as you read the value from the mutex it will be unlocked so you can go to the next iteration so it will be a safe operation in short and here we define a done channel we call increase two times in concurrent way and uh, by doing this we are calling done receive from done two times in order to unlock both of them and we just print the counter value here because think about this you call this function right in a separate coroutine you see there is a value write operation to this channel if you do not receive value from this part you will see these coroutines will never be finished so you need to read them first most probably if you put for example a a here you, you can just assign value of it to a assign value of this one to b when you print both of them separately you will see 1000 and 1000 okay let's switch to another one this time the following is a lock true receive example this was lock true send let's try lock true receive lock receive profile lock through another function run okay define a channel and it will be struct okay the capacity again one we can just introduce a um, introduce a variable and let's say that this will be change a mutex and I am sending a value to this channel and the value again is another struct and this uh, counter is equal to zero another increase function function and inside the function there will be a so I am reading value from it basically I assigned a value I just pushed a value struct empty value to mutex channel inside the function I am reading it read it counter by one 
and here I am assigning another one so that it will be blocked again yeah the, the remaining part will be same this was the true send okay log true receive okay very same strategy but think about this one log true send you are locking this operation you are locking this operation by sending a value to mutex channel and also you see there is a done function which is expected and when you have a look at the receive here you are sending a value here if you do not receive this value you will see it will be blocked this time it is blocked by a receive operation okay let's finalize this one use channels as a counting semaphores counting semaphores there is another wikipedia let's check it in computer science okay we know semaphore but the, the link is same mm -hmm. Semaphores are a useful tool in the prevention of race condition. Race condition because uh, more than one thread cannot access to a specific resource at the same time if you are using semaphores. And semaphores are a useful tool in the prevention of race conditions. However, their use is by no means a guarantee that a program is free from this problem. So still you can get this problem, by the way. Semaphores which allow an arbitrary resource count are called counting semaphores, while semaphores which are restricted to values 0 and 1, locked, unlocked, unavailable are called binary semaphores. Okay, most probably this time they will mention about this uh, work group. Work group, yes. Or weight group. Weight group, yes. You see. <coughs> in order to state a lock unlock operation if you define them if you state them with zero and one it, they are called a binary semaphore um, if you define some kind of counting semaphore so think about this you are continuously firing up a separate go routine one two three you are basically incrementing the value and then whenever you finish your go routine if you decrease them by one and if you reach the zero as a counter then you are saying that every operation is finished whenever you fire a go routine you increment this counter by one whenever you finish your go routines you decrement your value by one i mean the counter by one they are called counting counting semaphores counting semaphores can be viewed as multi-owner locks if the capacity of a channel is n then it can be viewed as a lock which can have at most n owners at any time. Binary semaphores, mutexes, are special counting semaphores. Each of binary semaphores can have at most one owner at a time. Okay, because when it is zero, that means it is unlocked. So you can just access there. Whenever you access that resource, it will be locked. That means the value will be one. So you will end up with only one process can reach to this access uh, this resource counting semaphores are often used to enforce a maximum number of concurrent requests so binary semaphores are for preventing so restricting the resource access by one so at the same time there can be only one uh, owner of this one but in the counting semaphores you are seeing that it can be accessed by maximum n maximum n concurrent request and that's it like using channels as mutexes there are also two manners to acquire one piece of ownership of a channel semaphore acquire ownership through a send release through a receive acquire ownership through a receive release through a send same same but this time there will be a counting semaphore that's it 
let's have a look at this example. We have a new type seat. It is actually an integer. We have another type bar. Bar means it is a channel type of that contains seats, right? There is a function here serve customer and there is a receiver function bar. The serve customer C take accepts a uh, integer uh, argument. What it does seat seat okay we just get a value from bar assign it to seat and then free seat and leave the bar yeah so basically uh, hmm. okay okay so let's say that there is a seat available seat in the bar bar you can say that row and there is the available seat when you when it is read by a variable so we read it that means we just lock this uh, seat and we assign this one to seat and there is no available space in the bar then after a while we are assigning a seat value to bar that means there will be a new value in the bar channel so let's see what happens the bar has 10 seats yep the capacity is 10 place seats in a bar so I already mentioned this cap I just heard this one yesterday it returns the capacity of a channel of a slice of I couldn't remember it can be map or something like that so seat actually is an integer so you can use this notation for every seat so basically they are the seat number these seats are pushed to this channel you see there can be 10 uh, values so it will start from 0 to the capacity which is 10 we will add these seat values to bar channel okay in another iteration it will start from 0 it will go to infinity and it will increment by one for each iteration there is a delay and we are running this concurrent function so customer okay Cool, cool. So you see, there is a receiver function usage here. When you say, so first of all, we are sending ten seat values to this bar channel. So there will be ten seats inside this bar channel. Here, it seems it can go to infinity, but it is not something like that. When you try to run this core routine bar, this one, this value when you say that serve customer actually this channel this channel value goes to here the receiver function right and when you say serve customer actually it will just reserve it and add it to the bar again right so these executions for every second it is trying to get something from the uh, seats bar channel and after that it will just release it it will lock and it will release this operation is done per second but what about this part yeah there is 
okay cool so think about this there are 10 available seats in a bar it seems on every second it is trying to reserve a seat from the bar but at this when you have a look at this part you'll say okay after 10 seconds every seats will be reserved and you cannot use any other seats it is not correct because you see <clears throat> when you reserve a seat from the bar it is released after after at least two seconds this will be two seconds plus a random number so the seats will be reserved very fast but at the same time they will be released slower than reserve operation let's try to implement it. I really like this implementation by the way uh, counting semaphores counting semaphores let's do another file counting There are two types, type seat, this is an integer, type r, channel of seat. This is a run function, but before that there will be a serve customer. Fun. Funk receiver, receiver will be bar, and the name will be serve. Turn nothing. So long that print customer C enters the bar and then C equal to R. After a while, log that print. So this drinking, drinking something is simulated by this function time dot sleep duration will be time dot second multiplied by time dot duration and duration is two seconds plus round dot n six and seed goes back to bar it means B okay then here run seed and uh, no units seats or seat by the way we don't need to 
define a, a name name uh, you don't need to try to provide a variable name, meaningful variable name within the for loop iterations. So you can just use i is equal to zero, then it will go until the capacity cap cap of bar this one and just increment it by one. Here I for another iteration so go to zero I and this will be an infinite operation I plus plus so you see infinite for loop time that sleep will be time that second and after that go bar dot serve customer and customer ID will be I that's it and here time dot sleep and that second uh, but here for if you do not pass any value to for loop, it is another infinite. Unreachable code? Huh. Oh, why? Let's see if it is unreachable or not. Counting semaphores. You see, always new customers is coming up to this system. At the same time, the old customers freeze the seeds. I mean, they release the seeds. That's how the new available seeds are assigned to new customers. That's it. Let's say that you just go to a pub. There is no available space. And then uh, whenever somebody, some person, just finish his drink or eat dinner let's say that they just pay for it they go outside and a new customer comes inside the uh, this bar that's it I really like this example by the way I don't know what what, what are you think about this part but I really like the example Let's see, it's been 50 minutes. Two goritins can dialogue through a channel. The following is an example of which will print a series of Fibonacci numbers. Ping pong, ping pong. Let's see what it is. I, I assume that you already know Fibonacci numbers. There is a type, ball, which is unsigned integer 64. There is a play function. It accepts player name and table table is channel of ball okay this is an infinite loop we just send a value to ball channel here as you can see there is no left row that means you can write to this channel and you can read from this channel um, so table what is table there should be a value passed to this channel you read it from the channel if and then uh, you say, huh, this is something like there is a channel whenever a new player just joins to system, that means there will be a new value here. And you can read it and we can initiate the initiate the operation. So there is a new ball here. This player name just pings the ball. 
the last value is 1. So, okay, let's say that you ping a ball to this system, okay, and then there will be a value here, right? It can be one, two, three, whatever value it is, and ball will be equal to ball plus last value. Last value is one. Let's say that I pass three, three. It will be three plus one, which is four ball will be 4 so ball is 4 4 is less than last value which is false it will not go here it will continue to execute this one last value will be ball which is 4 ok if you send a value to this table less than last value then it will fail the game will be finished so go funk you send one when you send one here you will read one ball will be 2 so 2 
let's see. Let's put zero here. Doesn't matter. You see, when you send zero, the last value is one. Okay. When you send one, one two three two three five three five eight something like this the ping pong game that's simulating the uh, fibonacci series ah, okay the um the article let me share on the channel again you can have a look at here Yeah, I like this implementation also. Let me stop it. So it seems it just reached to a main uh, content, main section. Let's see, channel encapsulated in channel. Okay, there are, th th there are another use cases. Let's see, the sections, channel encapsulated in channel. What else? Check lengths and capacities of a channel. Block the current routine forever. Try send and try receive. Okay. So let's um, just stop on this section. Uh, you see, there are lots of use cases. I will try to recover cover every of them, and at the end, I will send this uh, project to GitHub, my GitHub repository, so you can have a look at examples. Uh, in order to play with them um, if you don't have any other questions so I can we can finalize here Thanks for listening, by the way. Um, have a nice day, have a nice evening. See you in the next session.